Uh, yeah, uh, Minneapolis PD, Twin Cities, St. Paul. I'd like to report a crime. There's been some sort of an assault. This Adrian Heath gnome, Dave, what happened? These gnomes are furious. These gnomes, I, I can't Listen, give them answers. Andrew, when you leave, I got to keep order. And you gnome what's going to happen when gnome is going down. Oh, my God. Extra time starts now. Oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, driven by Continental from the AT&T MLS Studios in Midtown Manhattan. I am Andrew Eby with my partner in soccer, David Goss. Back What's up, again. David? Uh, what happened here? It looks like uh, this looks is what like happens some when you leave. violent crime, perhaps. I have been told. In the studio. This Adrian Heath, is he, he's cut off at the knees. Yeah. It's like he was when he was in Orlando. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help Whoa. myself there. Whoa. Yeah, there are other jokes to be made, but I won't. Because Adrian and I had a good chat. Feel good about our relationship going forward. Oh, yeah, you so. guys are homies there. Yeah, we even have the uh, the signed Adrian Heath gnome. This is the head gnome, and we'll have him negotiate with all these other angry gnomes about what happens to their uh, uh, their fallen comrade. So let's say. are we all good with Adrian now, or is it just personal with uh, you? You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't bring up anybody else but you myself. You didn't sign a full I, treaty. No, for sure. You for just sure. Got this visa. is more back channels, diplomatic back channels, and we hope that in... You know, practice. Maybe we'll all go meet in Yalta or something. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Have okay. a little bit of a, you know, the big three. Let's yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah. Let's call that. Look, that this is a it, classic. Yeah. This is a classic Quiesling move. By uh, right wow. There. You yeah, you yeah. found a way to get it in. Nineteen Boom. interviews to come from LA. I was there for three days. Sat down with all manner of people. We have two to come in this show. I don't know if you heard, but like this Chicharito news is big or something. Big. People care about it. So Jonathan dos Santos and Guillermo Berrocholoto will be in this show. We have interviews with them about what Chicha will bring, what the signing means, how they get the best out of this team, and how excited they are to have uh, a big star like him in L.A. to replace Zlatan, though I will caution, he will not replace Zlatan. He will just be the guy who plays the same position as Zlatan. I do like that. You went to the media marketing tour. That's why you were out yes. there, where you interview a lot of people. It happened at the Bank of California Stadium? It was a little bit awkward in that way. Yeah, it's classic Galaxy to just like someone else's party, just yeah. drop a giant bomb in the middle. And make it all about yourself. I thought it was interesting. Some people in the YouTube comment section th thought so as well. <laughs> they were like, wait, what? Why? Who? Uh, and if you watch on YouTube, big thank you as well for that. We are going to talk to Taylor Twelman in just a second. We are going to talk about ankle drama in Toronto and all manner of things. Tom Bogert from MLSsoccer.com is coming up. His inaugural run around the league on Extra Time. Give us a little bit of uh, insight on the Rapids, on Philly, some uh, Gressel information from GMs around the league that will not be named. So he's coming up. But first, the biggest news you know what it is. Tuesday, the entire MLS world was a buzz. MLSsoccer.com's top story was obviously Julian Gressel being traded to DC United. Was not Chicharito after a week of hoopla. It was Julian Gressel traded to DC United. That tells you how much Atlanta fans care about this. <laughs> DC up to $1.1 million in allocation money. Most of it TAM, 650 TAM in 2020, 100 TAM in 21, and then 350K in TAM based on performance incentives that Stephen Goff, who was all over this and broke it for the Washington Post, says we'll get up to $1 million. Tell me about your you perception of this email, deal. So I, just I did get an email. Sure. Yeah, normally you ask me to mute it and I mess yeah. this one up. So tell me about your perceptions of this trade. Who won? Who lost? What comes next? Why are people so jacked up, other than the fact that Julian Gressel was beloved in ATL? Yeah, I think I think a lot of the reaction to this is emotional. One, what he meant to Atlanta, um, I think goes off the field, and he's the all-time assist leader. Of course, a very short club. Him and Joseph Martinez had a great relationship. He mentioned in an article on The Athletic to Felipe Cardenas, like, that was the hardest goodbye was to Joseph. and Which is funny because then Joseph Martinez asked about it, was like, I, doesn't, I care about my money. Yeah, there's two people. Yeah. There's the Joseph that yeah. talks to us right. and the Joseph who actually Correct. exists in the real world. Who probably gave Gressel a nice big hug. And yeah. said, he said, gracias. No, he said, where are you going? I need my assist because <laughs> yeah. I need my right. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's all of that going on. When I look at it from the outside, I would say for Atlanta, um, I think they're going to have trouble replacing his production. Obviously, even if they paid him, they were never going to replace his production for the money they were getting on the salary cap at $135,000, whatever it was, as a draft pick. But he fit in perfectly with that team because he could move around a lot and still give you the same production. And you have pieces right now in Barco, in PT, who uh, haven't found their comfort zone. Yeah. And so you're still testing things out. It isn't, you know, I can't tell you how Atlanta United is going to play this year. 
I don't even think they know yet. So Gressel gives you the flexibility to play him at right back, to play him at wing back, to have him fill in a little centrally. And you know that you have that consistent connection between him and Joseph and the production you're going to get. It's going to be hard to replace that. You're not going to replace it on the number, even that you got for a trade from him. You don't Uh, think Brooks Lennon has the capability necessarily to approach those numbers? Because in my mind, what Gressel has been so good at is the timing. But once the timing is recognized, he and Joseph just seem to be on a different level with you make the run now, I'm going to serve the ball. The service is at the very top, upper echelon, Mm -hmm. those early balls, whipped in balls, even balls pulled back on the ground he was so good at. like He's the best crosser in that club. Lennon... In my mind, at RSL was at his best at right back. So I don't know that he's the replacement at, if you're going to say a 4-3-3 at that right midfield spot, that Gressel was starting in. And you still have Franco Escobar on the club. So I don't even know if Lennon is a starter. At right back, yes, I could see Lennon with that type of runway to, to cover ground, to probably get separation because of his speed. He won't serve the ball as clean as Gressel. I could see some of it. But at that right midfield spot, I don't think so. I think it's either. And the either... timing will have to come over months. Yeah. It won't just be like, snap your fingers, watch out. Here is yeah. the exact same ball over and over. Now, Tito Vialba could be at right wing. That could be the opening. And it could be that you change the shape a little bit and allow Vialba and Joseph to play as two strikers up top a little bit. But on the flip side, you mentioned the chemistry, the connection, the timing, all those things. Gressel won't have that this year in D.C. He may never have it. Joseph's a special player. It's pretty hard. I think he's going to be good for DC. I don't know if at the end of this, anyone says he was worth a million dollars in allocation and trade and a high TAM deal. But I think in the end, in a salary cap league, when you have players like this who you can guarantee a level, a, a, a floor with them, you can guarantee the, the culture they're going to bring to your club, what they do, and that they're comfortable in Major League Soccer. I think he was a distressed asset in Atlanta, and for D.C., it's a no-brainer that you go and get him. And if it doesn't work out, you have one of your pieces that you end up can move later. And you can move it in MLS or you can move it outside of MLS. But when you, I'm an NBA fan. When you watch a player like this where there's a contract negotiation, what's going on, what's his future, every team should be on the phone with that club to see what it's worth. And for D.C., I don't know what they were going to spend this on outside of yeah. MLS, so I think it's worth bringing him in. This was a very DC signing to me, and in, in what you said, which is a distressed asset within the league, and distressed is it's you know very in quotes here. Yeah. It's not like his on the field production no. was the issue; it was just sort of the relationship between he and the club. So now DC don't get that cap benefit that Atlanta did because mm-hmm. now he is, according to Stephen Goff, up there around seven hundred thousand dollars. And you said it. The question is, what were they going to do with this TAM otherwise? Yeah. And if they did something with it, would it be as productive as Julian Gressel? I'm now imagining for DC United, Paul Ariola and Julian Gressel, almost, it's almost like a hockey shift. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, man, like bump fist when I go back and yeah. I'm, when I see you running past me, I'll pull in behind you. Like you have one guy whose service is unquestionable. You have another guy whose work rate and whose goal scoring ability is starting to seemingly creep up in Paul Ariola, though he's not necessarily consistent in that way. And in many ways, it seems to me like they're the perfect combo. And if I'm Ola Kamara, He's the secondary winner. The first winner is Julian Gressel, whose bank account just got deservedly way fatter. (laughs) The second winner is Ola Kamara because he's looking at a team that he was on last year and was second fiddle to Wayne Rooney, and now he's saying, all this is built around giving me service. I now have Yamil Asad, who I didn't have last year. I have Edison Flores, who I didn't have last year and is very, very good and will open up space for me, both through the through ball on the long shots as well as just attracting defensive pressure. And now I have two guys on the right that are going to live to get to the end line and whip the ball into me. Like, this is great. For me, it's great because now D.C. looks much better. The question is, are Atlanta better off? I don't know. Carlos Bocanegra said we could have basically held him hostage under the rules. Yeah. We could have sat on him for a year and a half and had his rights. Which doesn't help anyone. Because then he goes to Germany. He never comes back. It's an unnecessary way to go. So I don't think Atlanta was wrong in making the trade. The question for Atlanta will always come back to the initial offer that they gave him yes. a year and a half to two years ago and the way the conversations went That's since That's where then. the regret should be probably. Because yeah. you probably could have got him at like a very reasonable cap number after year one. You would have been given up your cap benefit. We don't know how that works within their cap mm-hmm. in, let's say, 2018. But you could have had him at maybe 300 k and maybe he's not upset. Maybe he's not saying, give me more money. Or maybe right. he is. Yeah. Maybe that was the inevitability. Yeah, it's hard to know. know. I thought you touched on it, though, in that I think Gressel right now, in my mind, is the starting right back for D.C., which maybe isn't his ideal position, but he's a high-level player at that position in this league. But also, all of these guys, because Flores is one of them, 
of he's an attacking player who works really hard. Segura who covers is that a too? ton of ground. Well, he's a teammate. That's his life. Sure, but, sure. But he played he played up the field a little bit. Right. Last year. I'm just saying. I think that this team fits Ben Olsen's DNA well. Of they are going to cover the most ground of any team in the league. They also have pieces that he can interchange a little bit. So when you look at last year, where if Lucho was out, you were starting Felipe at the number ten. Now you've got you know three high level wingers. Flores, who can slide outside. Acosta, who can slide inside. So you have a couple different options. Yeah. O'Neal Fisher, shout out to my oh. guy. If Gressel's not playing it right back, no let's legend. do it, O'Neal. Also, Emma Boateng. I mean, they have depth. Mm-hmm. They have now, as you said, difference makers, but also not just attacking-wise in the Ben Olsen sense as well, which yeah. is we're going to get after you a little bit. All right. Let's keep it rolling and talk Chicharito, of course. Imaginamos, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Imagine monos cosas chingones. I tried to say that way too fast. Cool things. We experienced them together, and LA experienced this at the airport. LAX jacked up to see Chicharito. Of course, the news coverage is wall to wall. And then uh, the quote comes that now everyone is talking about, uh, in quotes, is the word retirement, which you never want to hear around Major League Soccer. I think any of us who pay close attention to this league know. That is not the reality of Major League Soccer. It is a perception that, yes, we're still fighting against sometimes, but, like, look around this league and try to tell me that this is a retirement league. Chicharito put out his vlog. His content is owning the news cycle. I mean, it's it's really it's how well you get done. people on your vlog. Extremely polished. Uh, it was an emotional conversation with his father, what this quote comes from, and I'll just kind of give it to you here so you can understand it, and we'll dig in with Taylor in just a little bit. Quote, Everything is perfect. It's only that, well, it's like the beginning of my retirement, you know? And then his dad pushes back and says, no, no, that's not the case. And Chicharito says, no, dad, try to understand me. And now remember, this is all translated. It is from the translations that they put over the vlog themselves, but that has to be kept in mind. No, dad, try to understand me. What I mean is we're saying goodbye to a career that we put a lot of work into. We're going to look on the bright side and it's going to be amazing, talking about the Galaxy and MLS, but whether we like it or not, we are retiring from the European dream. And of course, now you see all the chirons and the headlines and people on at the hot takes are just zeroing in on retirement and understandably so but I think and I hope that the people out there listening right now understand this context more so than that one little pull line I know media and analysis and commentary in this day and age so often gets caught up on parsing that one word and driving it home and in this case understandably so but like I get it man like Europe was seemingly Chicharito's calling right he only stayed a year at Chivas. He went to Man U. He was the promised one. He was the person that everyone could relate to, could live through, could put hopes behind to help that he was banging in goals for El Triaton. But, like, that was his dream. He lived the dream. It's tough to see that dream end. And I'm sure it was tough to have it not go well at West Ham and have this Sevilla thing blow up basically in six months for him and just be very clear that it wasn't going to work in the way that he needed it to work, which was – for him to get playing time. He's 31 years old. He should be on the field. He should be in a position to be a big part of L tree going into 2022. So I get it. I know why people are going to get on that one word, but the European dream is over. He used a word that is a trigger and people got triggered, but it there's more context. There's so much more to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with you that if you're 21 and you go to Man U and then next you go to Real Madrid to end up, seven, eight years later, leaving Sevilla because you can't get playing time in January isn't what you had in mind. So not everything has gone the exact way he wanted it to. And something to remember is his dad was a great player in Mexico and he was like geared to be the next star. He was bred that way as a young kid. He came through Chivas. By the time he got to the first team, Man U was already scouting him. He went to a World Cup and scored, you know, at whatever he was, 20 years old. So he was always a step ahead, and there was a whole plan to it. And then that's a lot of work to yep. work on. And so I think some people look at the word. A lot of other people have watched it and, and just noticed the emotion of changing course in your career, a thing that you'd worked for and you'd been angled at for so long. And I think for a lot of people who fight for one thing, when that thing ends, it's a change in your life. And I think a lot of people can understand that. Um, I'm excited to see him play here. Yeah. I would say a you think huge this puts more pressure on him. I really don't think it's going to change much because a huge part of him coming was to get Mexican-American fans to watch him and to get Mexico to watch this league and respect this league. And you go on all of the sports platforms, Medio Tiempo and 2DN and all of them, it hasn't been the cover story. It hasn't been the first thing mentioned. So the first thing that I've seen is him coming. So that is still the story around all of this. 
the pressure was always going to be on. Same as it was for Vela. To come to Major League Soccer, you have to perform because if you want to be a part of the national team, you can't be good in MLS. You have to be great in MLS. That's the expectation. So I think that always exists. And also your legacy is obviously sort of made in Mm -hmm. a lot of ways for Chicharito. But you don't want to have the end be this sour note. And I think he understands that. And I don't think him using this word, retirement, has anything to do with his expectations of Major League Soccer. I don't think there's any chance that he goes into the galaxy, into this league, into 2020 thinking, I'm a coast. Mm -hmm. This is going to be easy. This is retirement. I can do what I want. I don't think in any way that is his implication here. It's simply the end of what was his ultimate dream. And if you can't identify with that, I I don't get it because we all have periods in our lives that – you know, ebbs and flows or a dream that peaks and then you have to move on. It is a, it is a goodbye. It is that going away from your life in one way, a retirement of an age within what you live. The other thing I would say is, come on, this is what you wanted with Chicharito. This is why you signed Chicharito, yeah. so that every single word is parsed. Like, most players, nobody cares. <laughs> a lot of players, nobody cares. That was what is beautiful about this signing was that anything he said, anything he did, any perception, any little wrinkle or news nugget, was going to get ripped apart and chopped up and cut up and analyzed, and it might be negative, it might be positive, it might be somewhere in between, but that was part of the bargain, and it was definitely a bargain that was worth it. So now we get to see Chicharito in Major League Soccer. How will he do? I don't think this is a big story. I think it'll go away quickly, but we're talking about. All right, let's talk to Taylor Twelman. He is on the line now. You know him from ESPN. Taylor, what's up, man? What's going on, guys? Happy New Year. Oh, it is a good new year. It's a beautiful time in Major League Soccer. The news thick and fast. Nobody would rather talk to about it than you, TT. We're talking about Chicharito. Everybody is. There is the, quote, retirement quote that he had in his vlog. Retarar. I don't know exactly the meaning of the word in Spanish. It could have some alternate meanings. What do you think about this quote? And then also sort of the news cycle that's followed it. Um, I find it typical. Uh, just because of a direct translation um, and and how it went. I I watched the entire thing. I thought it uh, to be very intriguing. Uh, I found it to be extremely real, um, something that very few people get to see the inside of an athlete. Um, I love the reaction from his father, quite honestly, when he did say, whatever that word directly translates, whether it's retirement or not. And his dad was like, no, you're not. Like, I just thought that it was a real emotional um, quest. Now, what's interesting to me is for the MLS fans that are taking, a, taking offense to it or even the sporting fan that takes offense to it, listen, the truth of the matter is he's leaving La Liga, coming to Major League Soccer, coming to North America. At some point, he was going to do that. And for him... It is a retirement or an end to his European quest. But if anyone thinks Chicharito is going to come over here the way Steven Gerrard or Pirlo did, then you're completely out of your mind and you haven't done any kind of due diligence to understand the kind of person and player that he's going to be. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I just think there needs to be a little bit more nuance in the analysis of sports these days, but that's, it is what it is. That's the political climate we live in. That's the social media climate we live in. And you take one word out of that real introspective moment with Chicharito and his parents. I I enjoyed it. and I made nothing of it. Preach, preach. I'm with you, Taylor, on this one. Uh, I wrote my column and I was trying to think about the quote unquote biggest signings in MLS history in the Chicharito context. I came to the conclusion that Chicharito is the biggest signing behind David Beckham. Now, that doesn't mean he will be the most influential or the most successful, but in this moment, at the moment, he puts ink to paper, second all-time in MLS history for me. What do you say? What will Chicharito mean to the Galaxy in Major League Soccer? That's a difficult a difficult one, Weeby. I, it really is for me, because initially I'm going to say, yep, you're right, you're spot on. However, if we're really talking about the biggest signing, so much of goes into that than just, well, the player, because He's got some real big shoes to fill with what Zlatan did in two years with just his goal-scoring impact. But also, he, Zlatan transcended sports. David Beckham transcended sports. Chicharito's not going to transcend sports. So anyone that tries to convince me that, well, I'm sorry, it's not. However, he is the rock star of the number one competitor of your national team and of your domestic league. He is the guy. 
He is the David Beckham of what Liga MX stands for, of what the Mexican national team stands for. So that's why I don't think you're completely off base by that. But I think it's very difficult to say that right now because he's got to perform on the field the way the Zlatans of the world did, the way Robbie Keane did, even though Robbie Keane's not in the same stratosphere as Zlatan. But when you say the biggest signing, David Beckham and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, they transcended sports. I'm not totally sure Chicharito's going to do that. However, the street credibility of MLS versus Liga MX, of the Mexican rock star coming to Major League Soccer, that's where I think your statement has some real credibility. And here's what I would say, Taylor, is that this is second for me because it is so targeted. I agree with you in that Zlatan is a force of nature, both in a media and on-field sense, that Chicharito is not probably going to match in the same way, but it's apples and oranges, right? Chicharito is going to be the guy that turns on the audience that MLS in this moment wants to have turned on. No, I, I completely agree with that. But you also need to ask the question, and this is the uh, white elephant in the room for Major League Soccer, is how do you, how do you get the local fan to uh, want to watch nationally, right? We look at these television ratings and how they rate. Listen, no doubt about it, Los Angeles is going to be the mecca of the league the way it was the last two years. And I think they may have doubled down, and rightfully so, with Chicharito in that. But is the Colorado Rapids fan going to watch? Is the Philadelphia Union fan going to watch? Initially, yes. How long is that sustained? That's why I'm saying that's where they, I think the jury's still out on that. But for me, and I said this at MLS Cup, and I said it in the playoffs when, when the Galaxy lost to LAFC, if Zlatan's done, there was only two players that I thought they could go after. Suarez and Chicharito. They hit a home run with the Chicharito signing, and now he needs to deliver. But the LA Galaxy have 100% outdone themselves and created an identity that has been understated in this. Major League Soccer is built on parity and built on everyone else, every franchise looking the same way. The LA Galaxy is the one franchise that has stood out. Now, is Atlanta and LAFC going to have something to say 10 years and we start looking at their historical impact? Absolutely, guys. But from day one, the LA Galaxy and Major League Soccer have operated differently and have delivered, and they've done so again with Chicharito. You've mentioned it a few times, though, Taylor. It matters what it looks like on the field. The production matters. You are an all-time MLS Fox in the Box. Little P might be the greatest one in this region's history. How does Chicharito fit in on the field? What does he do for the L.A. Galaxy in games? Well, I think what, David, what he does differently is obviously he's going to be somewhat of an influence defensively. The fact is that Zlatan couldn't run. His mobility was limited, and I get it. He scored 50-plus goals in two years. I understand all of that. But the truth of the matter was they were defending with nine field players right away, and every opposition knew that. Now, how you dealt with him with second balls and playing direct and his ability to pull rabbits out of his hat, which he did throughout his entire career and in MLS in that career, Chicharito gives them a different option. He's going to bring some mobility, but they're awfully thin up front. So any kind of injury to one of those front three, they're limited in that. Now, Pavone, Katai, whoever plays underneath him, that left re- remains to be seen. I, also, I still think they're limited at center back. I think defensively, the LA Galaxy last year and now coming into this year, that's still a liability, but he gives you something a little bit more. And I know Scaloto wants to high press. He wants to get after it a little bit more. You're allowed to do that with the mobility and the legs of Chicharito, but make no mistake about it, at the end of the year, he's going to be based. How many goals did he score? How many goals did he influence? That number has to be 25 or more combined goals or assists for them to have a, for, for them to have a real success because I think LAFC may have gotten even better and younger than they were last year. So I was going to ask you, give me a number. You gave it to us, 25 goals. We'll see and combine what he does. I think he will approach that. I'm not sure it's a guarantee rubber stamp that he'll get there, but uh, TBD on that one. Now, we do know the end of the Julian Gressel saga. Taylor, this one played out extremely publicly, and in the end, Julian got what he wanted, which was at least uh, the TAM deal, the money, according to Stephen Goff. 
Atlanta probably would have liked to keep him. They were not able to do so. They got the Tam Hall back from D.C. United. Winners and losers in this deal. Is everyone a winner? Is there a loser? Who comes out on the best side of history in this one? Well, first, I think you raise an interesting question. Until the CBA is finished and done and we have an understanding of what Tam is, this may be viewed as, if the league progresses the way many of us think it is, this may be short money. And that's why I think there's a big question mark to Atlanta United in this group. Now, listen, Carlos Bocanegra and his quotes afterwards, he actually talks indirectly and directly about the CBA and players' rights and what they could have done to Julian. So he did right by the player. Absolutely, 100%, that I agree with. But I'm not totally sure when Tata Martino is looking me in the eye for the first two seasons there in Atlanta, and I said, who's the first name you write on the sheet? And he looks at me and doesn't say Miguel Amaron. He doesn't say Joseph Martinez. He doesn't say Brad Gazan. He literally says Julian Gressel. And I said, why? And he said, because it gives me the flexibility to do so many different things. And also, he literally makes Joseph Martinez the happiest striker he has. And that's the one thing nobody has talked about. And I know for a fact that when Gressel was on the field, Joseph Martinez knew Two or three opportunities were going to come. He's arguably one of the best crossers in this league, if not the best crosser in the league. So now, and I've reached out to a couple of Atlanta United people, absolutely, Joseph Martinez has got his hands up saying, whoa, 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 what are we doing? A winner for sure, D.C. United. I don't know. Even e- They're a winner, guys, even if I don't know where he's going to play for them because he gives them some tactical flexibility. He gives them a real option. And I can tell you right now, Ola Kamara is picking up Julian Gressel at the airport. He's going to drive him home. He's going to make sure that kid is ready to play week in and week out. And don't be shocked if Kamara doesn't score 15-plus goals, which, by the way, for all of you on Twitter that question my tweet, do some research. When was the last time D.C. United had a goal scorer? that had 15-plus goals. It's been a long time. I think Ola Kamara can do that. It's a win for D.C. United. I think the jury's still out on Atlanta United in this move because of what TAM means, what the CBA looks like, and how do they replace that productivity and that flexibility tactically. Because you're given, what, Emerson Heinemann over 800 grand guaranteed for three years, guys. Now, the truth of the matter is, the Hyman fits into more what Frank DeBoer wants, but you're going to be judged by that contract given to Hyman and not Russell. I still think the jury's out, and I think it will be. I wouldn't be shocked if Atlanta's viewed on two, three years down the road as losers of this deal. You mentioned the D.C. side and the production. We expect to see on the Atlanta side, LGP gone, Darlington Nagby gone, now Julian Gressel. Do you think there's more big pieces on the way out? for this roster rebuild, or do, is it all now just filling in for Atlanta? Uh, I think it's filling in. I, you know, I, you can read between the lines and the rumors and whatnot with Petey Martinez returning. Petey Martinez is going to be there for the start of CONCACAF Champions League and MLS uh, regular season. Now, I'm not going to guarantee it he's through the summer because, what, you know, if, if someone comes by, if he starts the season – with seven goals, seven assists, who's to say someone doesn't come in and make a ludicrous offer, then obviously Atlanta United will address that. Uh, I don't see any other major moves. So they got some holes to fill. You know, Michael Parker's retiring is a big hole, you know, and that's an interesting one. I'm not saying he was a huge part of that team, especially last season, uh, but the leadership in that locker room, how do you replace that? LGP, I think, was a liability at times. Um, I think he had the capability of being a real, arguably the best defender in MLS, but he time and time again shot himself in the foot with a stupid decision or a gamble. So I, I, that may be an addition by subtraction, depending on how they fill it in, but I don't see any other big names. But I'll tell you right now, no Gressel, Barco, and Petey Martinez better show up. I had 20 goals and assists for Barco last year on the Baron T. Should have saved it for this year. That was a mistake. Let's talk about ankles and media drama and Michael Bradley, and Josie Altador, and Toronto FC. If people haven't been following this one, Michael Bradley, of course, injured in MLS Cup, had that sort of coming together with uh, with Torres and hurt his ankle. Played through that and then thought they were going to rehab it. They ended up not being able to do that. He had surgery here in New York City on Tuesday to fix some loose cartilage in his right ankle. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't work out the way that you might have hoped. He's out four months, and Josie Altador says it was handled poorly. What uh, happened yeah, here? That, 
I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, and what I mean by that is you also, Weeby, didn't bring into the equation, how often did Javinko complain about it? Right? You and know, Josie, there, there was indirect and di- direct complaints. Josie did it earlier, like a year issues. ago, yeah? He said, hey, this guy that right. was helping jovinko has gone. What's going on? Yeah, and so I, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. Listen, I, I, I obviously made my opinion uh, public with, you can't say, okay, you can't say surgery was the last resort when surgery wasn't even an option. And what I mean by that is Michael Bradley, knowing Michael Bradley, immediately was rehabbing the day they got home from Toronto. He took himself out of the U.S.-Canada Nations League game. He took himself out. He immediately reached out to those of us at ESPN at the U.S.-Canada game. He, they had pictures from the Toronto media sent to us saying, listen, he shot it up at halftime. He can't play. He's got swelling. But now the surgery is now, guys, if Michael Bradley knew surgery was an option, then we're talking about a different thing than he's out for four months. Does that make any sense of what I'm trying to say as, as an athlete? It, this means that he rehabbed it. They didn't take, they didn't do their due diligence on that rehab. I can guarantee you that because this surgery then, Knowing the surgery, knowing the is- the injury and what it is, this surgery would have been done early January, quite honestly, middle of December, and the timeline would be different. That's why I think the Josie Josie's frustrated. I think Josie needs to be extremely careful uh, because obviously he's got the frustrations, and I don't know what he's dealing with. But on the other hand. Hamstring injuries are hamstring injuries, and, and you're always going to point fingers at each way. I was there. I've been there. You've got to take some ownership of your body, which Josie has done. But this Michael Bradley one, guys, from me, behind the scenes, and we'll never know because Michael Bradley will never say it publicly, I'm not totally sure it was handled perfectly. I, I Actually, I know for a fact. It wasn't handled the right way. Yeah, it's definitely smoldering there, and we'll have to pay attention to see whether or not this kind of carries over as the season goes on. If there's another injury, if there's another issue, TBD. We have one more for you before we get you out, Taylor. These are the big stories. This is what everybody's talking about right now. Sometimes this time of the year in MLS, silence is the worst thing. It drives your fans crazy. It maybe means you're not going to have the reinforcements you need. Which club in your mind has had the most to worry about right now in terms of their offseason and outlook for this season? Weeby, initially when you just started to ask that question, the first team that comes to my mind is the Montreal Impact because they need to realize Thierry Henry is not a player anymore. He's a coach, so he doesn't take care of your issues that are on the field. However, and I love this fan base mainly because they hate me, but I enjoyed the rivalries we had. Are we serious with the Chicago Fire right now? Hey, I mean, you got the Chicago handshake. We'll shout him a lord. Robert Barrick. They got a DP Argentine D mid maybe coming. There's there's something maybe, now. There's maybe, something. There's something. Can't. So I say the Chicago Fire because your golden goose was Chicharito. Yeah, he was your guy. You're moving to Soldier Field. You're moving downtown. You rebranded. He's that. That is your guy. He single handedly puts fifty thousand in Soldier Field, and then. I answer Chicago Fire. I kind of answer Montreal Impact. Hey, New York Red Bulls, you doing anything? <laughs> Are you doing anything? Josh Sims Is back Chris on loan, Taylor. Is even alive? Like, so to answer your question, it's actually the New York Red Bulls. I am stunned that this is where they are. I'm stunned they haven't signed anyone for Chris, Ar- Chris Armas to actually use. I, I just, you, you can't replace them with USL 2 players as good as John Wolniak in that system and that club franchise and what they've done, I'm sorry. New York Red Bulls, for me, the, scr- the crickets that I've heard from you guys, that is as disheartening as anything that's happened in this offseason. You will never hear crickets from Taylor Twelman. We always enjoy chatting with them. Taylor, thank you so much for dropping by, lending some insight and expertise, man. Enjoy your day. No problem, boys. Good hearing your voice. All right, well. Uh, yeah, there's some information to chew on there from Taylor Twelman. While you do so, take a listen to this interview with Guillermo Barrow-Shalot. We'll be right back with Tom Bogert. 
10 minutes with Gije, Guillermo Barcelotto. Coach, you were my favorite player when I first started watching Major League Soccer. I still remember Nordeca doing the yeah. bow down. Those were yeah. wonderful days. Yeah, thank you very much. So let's talk Galaxy. Uh, you know, uh, we spent one year uh, coaching there. I think uh, this year we can get improved a little bit. Uh, we'll be okay. Uh, try to get the, the better level for the teams. Um, we are working. Let's talk Chicharito. Uh, what a signing this is for the Galaxy, for the city of Los Angeles, for Major League yeah, Soccer. I think it uh, will be very important for everyone, for our fans, for us, for the city, for the, for the traffic. I think uh, um, uh, as my coach, uh, I think uh, it's really good to have a player like him. You know, we lost uh, a Ibra. But we bring him and maybe they are not very similar players. But in the ending, uh, I think uh, we need to go and Chicharito, we have a, a lot to go. I've said don't compare the two. And you kind of no. mentioned it there because they're not the same. No. Zlatan's an alien. He's from a different planet. The things he does, the way he acts, the personality he has can't be replicated. Yeah. Chicharito, the player, in your system, in your team, why does he fit? Uh, a striker, obviously, in the box. We are a team try to, um, to attack, and uh, always very important, the player playing front knows where he had to go. We are uh, two wings. Uh, normally, right now, we are uh, Katai or Sebastian can play there. It's probably for the other side. I think uh, we we give uh, a lot chance at Chicharito for to show uh, the best he had. What's so special about his movement? You always hear about the way he moves, the timing of his runs. When you watch him, what's mm -hmm. so special? I think uh, he know where the ball will go in the box, and so I can say you have to go in the first, uh, near post, far post, whatever, at a striker, but. You can realize when he, he know where he had to go. He know he read before you where is going the ball. When you think of El Trafico and the city and the fans and the 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 reception that he will get, there's been a lot of talk about how big it will be, how much hype there will be. In your last year in LA, how do you think Chicharito will be received? I think uh in our stadium, it would be fantastic here. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but It'll probably be fantastic yeah, here, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, I think uh, they, feel, they will say hello, but I don't know after when I start the game. But, you know, I played with um, Man United in all Star game in 2010 when Chicharito uh, made a debut with uh, Man United. And I remember when he had in the... The game in the second half, and the people get crazy. It was fantastic with him. Uh, I think uh, the people, the fans, whatever uh, uh, club they, they are, they will support him before the game. And then, obviously, everyone want to win. But we, they will give it really good welcome to MLS, to Chicharito. You've seen rivalries of the most epic proportions. Yeah. River, Boca, you've been involved as a player and a coach. You had last year to experience El Trafico, which is very new in comparison. Yeah. In comparison, it's new, but the atmosphere of the feelings during the game, before the game, after the game, about the result, about the game, about who was, is, uh, is very, very similar. I like it. I like it even, you know, it is... 90 minutes soccer and you talking about soccer after the game, during the game, or before the game. I, I like it. I like the how the people feel that. I think is uh, is the real feelings in the soccer world. Christian Pavon, we saw just a little bit of him last year. Yeah, and you've gotten the best out of him mm -hmm. as a coach before. What is the best that we can see from Christian Pavon in Major League Soccer? What can he be for the Galaxy? I think he uh, last year for him was well. He um, he not feel like uh, he's a foreign player. From he start to play, he play well. 
but I think after 45 uh, days to working, I think he can work better and then last year because he know wasn't on feet last year when he come. Uh, he no had confidence when he come. So now is uh, the real Christian problem we can we see in the next year, the next season. How happy are you to be back in Major League Soccer as a coach? Is it a little surreal for you to have been here as a player and now return? Yeah. So I always I expect to come back to live in the United States and to work in MLS. I like uh, both things. I like uh, how it's growing and how serious is the MLS. And uh, I like to work here. Another day, uh, we went to outside the country with the manager, with the technical director, and uh, we were t- talking about the MLS and, and say, I, I like it. I like it, how it's going. Tell me one good Ibra story. What was it like to coach him? Ibra, no, it's fantastic. You, you know, you are... Uh, he can he can do something from the nothing. You are uh, here, uh, um, nothing happened, and he take a ball and he can score to do something different. I have uh, the best memory for him. I remember uh, not just good professional or talent professional. Uh, uh, I know really good person. Very demanding, very demanding to the coaches, to the teammates. I got a really good uh, uh, remember for him. You have an amazing legacy, player, coach, but I often think in Major League Soccer about your legacy in terms of sort of paving the way for so many of the players we now see, whether it's a, a Diego Valeri or a Sebastian Blanco, Argentine players who have decided that this is a place that they want to come. Have you heard from guys? Do you get phone calls? Do you give advice? Do you say, hey, Give go, try this. This is where you you can have a great life and a great career. Yes, yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes I I can't decide for them, or or maybe we have a lot of rules, and you can pick up whatever you want for to bring here for to uh, can to MLS. But uh, is a. Uh, I think for, it's a big opportunity for everyone, for every team, for, for every player to go here and, and show. Um, the league is growing and everyone knows. So it's a lot of player now want to come. All right. Guillermo Bershaloto, good luck in 2020. Good luck with your new striker. Thank you very much. Gije, Gije. And I love Guillermo Bershaloto. I wanted to do the Nordeca bow down to him, but he said that that would be inappropriate. And I, I generally agree. Before we get to uh What was his level news, of happiness to talk to you? Uh, it, he seemed pretty happy. Really? You'd think he wouldn't be? His English was impressive. And by the way, Jonah Dos Santos coming as well. He did his in English with us, his nice. interview. And that was also incredible. I, I'm always in awe of anyone in their second language yeah. or even third or whatever it is being able to communicate clearly, like, and just wanting to do it. I freeze up. Anytime it's time for me to talk Spanish, I, I freeze yeah, up. we like, already saw you in Yeah, the I tried to. I show. practice. One sentence. Yeah, and I couldn't get it. Three words. So, you might wonder who this is if you're watching on YouTube. Tom Bogert. It's like yogurt, but Bo at the front. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. I made that joke before, and he didn't love it. So, I had to do it again. <laughs> Tom, what's up, man? Nothing much. Uh, again, literally the only person who's ever made that connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, the yeah, first. Yeah. I feel great about that. <laughs> My last name is spelled Gas, so I know what you mean. Uh-huh. Well, I, I meet a lot of original Weeby's people. Weeby's also that. a pretty good one for that as well. But if you don't know, Tom is the man who's bringing you a ton of news, a ton of analysis, a ton of insight on Major League Soccer at MajorLeagueSoccerSoccer.com and also on Twitter, so go check him out there. Before we get to some of the things that are in your wheelhouse, can we just quickly talk about the Galaxy? Because... Uh, Carlos Zambrano, that Peruvian international, and not coming, says Kevin Baxter. Yeah. Taylor Twelman just told us, yeah, there are issues here. They want to play a certain way. I think Taylor was looking half glass half empty. Really? Yeah. Because you could tell me on one hand they have sh- problems with depth on the front line. There's definitely question marks at center back. I mean, they do. Back. It's like it's question legit. Uh, yeah. And then it's then it's Efron. And now then- take me to every MLS team and say, here's your top four guys on the front line. Chicharito, Pavone, Katai, and then name anyone else, and they're Good better. Boy. Very few MLS teams have a ton of depth in the attack. And v- all of those guys are in – it's not like they're 34 years old. It's not like you're relying on Villa and Pirlo and Lampard. You're talking about guys in their prime, guys who don't have a history of injury problems. And uh, to me – 
I think you've got enough pieces in the attack in the midfield. The question mark is still center back 100%. Yes. Uh, yeah. You need one, probably two, although I think Giancarlo Gonzalez didn't get a fair shake last year. Had to play right back, came yeah. in the middle of the year, blah, yeah, it's blah, still blah. Thin. He'll it's be better thin. this year. All right, Tom, let's hit your uh, expertise here. You've done a little reporting around the league. Should we call this around the league with Tom Bogert? Is it uh, – well, if it becomes regular, it, it will become <laughs> That's that. That's the goal. That's the goal here. What are GMs saying about this Julian Gressel deal? Because we went back and forth about the money, what it will be long term. What are you hearing? So, yeah, um, it – it comes down to, you know, it's fair value. A, a, lot of, a lot of people would say that, sure, uh, Atlanta United got a really big sum, but nobody went, you know, far enough to say that, ah, like DC United vastly overpaid. This was a bad deal. Because everybody says that Julian Gressel is a very good player. That, that's not up for debate. But the way it was described to me is that you have to think about it as, you know, one and a half players on your cap. Because not only are you giving up the allocation money to buy him, but then they're signing him to a new contract. So if you have the allocation money there that you can turn into a player, it's a smart move. And, it, and if you feel good about your roster behind that, and I'm sure that they do, then it's a smart move. I guess it comes down to what position is he going to play because uh, $1.1 million in allocation is a lot for a right back, but he's a unique right back. He's a wing back. He, he can play six, eight wing. You know, it's... Just comes down to, I guess, how it shakes out on the field. I think it's interesting the 1.5 because we always kind of talk about, oh, well, you use Tam, you have to pay Tam, but that's sort of a very straightforward way to wrap your head around it, which is you're mm -hmm. building with finite resources. There are a certain amount of resources you can devote to each of these cap positions. Well, this might be one and a half on that front. GMs are a nice way to skirt some big spending. Colorado maybe isn't big spending, but they do have a new DP. Yeah. Tell us about uh, the new DP straight out of Krasnodar, baby. <laughs> yeah, Eunice Namli. Uh, the club had had him on their radar for at least two years, um, and they thought that they had a good chance at signing him back in the summer. But, you know, Porg Smith is on the record saying that, yeah, we get why he would go to Russia because that's a very good team. They had European uh, football aspirations. They, they, they made the Euro uh, could have made the Champions League but ended up in Europa League. So Namli choosing them. Not a big deal, and it's not, it's not necessarily um, an indictment on the Rapids. But now they got their men, and it gives them some flexibility. It gives, it gives the attack, which was already pretty good to very good uh, last season um, towards the end, it gives them hopefully someone who can take them over the top, the same way that Zell Ryan does with the crew, which, again, was a solid attack, but now you have the crown jewel, the one that's supposed to take you to a new level. And when you look around with Namli, with, with Benize, with Galvan, uh, if he comes in the summer or maybe if he comes now, they're too deep everywhere. And Namli um, can play on the wing if needed, but he's not really needed out there. Um, but, again, it just gives Robin Frazier some options. Mauricio Pereira, did he come from Krasnodar? Am I making that up for Orlando City? I'll have to do some research on that one. Yeah, Look, I'm a big Colorado team, Rapids yeah. Dan. Them and the, the <laughs> crew for me this year are those teams where you can't help but love to root for them yeah. because they sort, they're not going to spend $15 million, so they're going to have to find that little bit of edge. Uh, let's keep it rolling here with the team that found that edge last year, and that is the Philadelphia Boom, internet. Union. Undefeated. He did yes. come from Krasnodar. Yes! Good stuff, I Weavy. knew it! Big I time. I knew it. My Krasnodar Also, knowledge. he spells it with a Y, because if you spell it with an I, you get the Brazilian singer-songwriter. Uh, yeah, I get that, too. <laughs> and also, if you just say Pereira, Orlando City, you get Leo, who I, I don't even know who that is. So, <laughs> that's where I'm at with the MLS preseason Orlando City right now. The Union, quietly, which is kind of their MO recently... <laughs> Are building, building, record. building. Yeah, I mean, it's not a huge transfer record. Whoa, whoa, whoa. breaking <laughs> transfer <laughs> record. That's fair. That's fair. What's Don't going on? Don't editorialize my editorialism. <laughs> Tell me about Ernst Tanner's efforts to uh, keep this momentum going. So, yeah, um, as he was very open about last year in wanting to play more dynamic, more up-tempo with the 4-4-2 diamond, you know, Harris Madunian is one of my favorite players in the league. No one's going to um, mistake him for a ball winner or an up-tempo player. He was incredible, and, and I think that he's going to be solid for Cincy, but it was clear that they wanted to get more dynamic. And, and athleticism is kind of the big MO. And Montero was huge. That was a deal that took a long time. It was very complicated. They originally had a agreement, or a purchase option, rather, um, in his initial loan that they weren't going to meet. And they negotiated that down to, as, as they, they put it, $2 million. Um, and again, it, it's just to get younger, it was a big deal. And then with, with Mati Orvets, who I'm pronouncing it hopefully exactly <laughs> how he does, even though he says it profoundly and he looks yes. very happy. Yeah, the sexy season. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. So I try to sound like him there. Anyway, Orovets is another one who, who the club have you know really big hopes for, and, and he's a cheap player. They didn't spend that much 
uh, to acquire him, and his cap hit isn't going to be that high. He's not a TAM player. It's a Kai Wagner feel to me. Yeah. Is that does yeah. that feel about right for the union where I've, you're trying to find that little edge both in the cap but also in the scouting realm? Yeah. Well, what's so interesting to me is that you know it used to be when you go to Europe you you weren't getting a lot of great value. You would get you know good players, but you know the their wages would be a little higher. You know the union are showing with, with Shabilko, with Wagner, and hopefully with Orvitz as uh, is their goal is that you can find value there. You just got to know where to look. All right, that's the Union. That's Colorado. A little bit of a nugget for Julian Gressel on you. That's Tom Bogert. Tell him where they can follow you on Twitter. At Tom Bogert. At, uh, it's easy enough. At Tom Bogert. <laughs> we are going to be right back. More on Chicharito with Jonathan Dos Santos. Ten minutes with Jonathan Dos Santos of the LA Galaxy. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Different surroundings here. This isn't your uh, home stomping grounds, huh? He's not my house, but my home, but it's really good stadium. Really good stadium. So let's talk about the big news. Chicharito. After many years, many rumors, stop and go, the LA Galaxy land their man. What do you think? I'm very happy. I'm very happy. He's a big player. I think that we need this kind of player uh, for our team. Uh, he's a worker. Uh, he scored a lot of goals. Uh, and he knows about the football, not the easy football. So I'm very happy because he's Mexican. He's a big player and, and yes uh, it will be very fun to 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 have fun uh, on the field and the connection of Mexico I think will be it will be good El Tree's leading scorer he comes to Los Angeles we know the culture here we know the people here we know I expect at least I think I know <laughs> the impact that he might have how is it going to be to have Chicharito in LA as part of the galaxy as part of El Trafico Big. I think it will be a big thing uh, that you 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 told. No, uh, uh, we have a lot of Mexicans in in, in LA. Uh, I think it's very important for the league because he's gonna like uh, give more name to the league and and yes, it will be really really good. Like. Uh, the fact that uh, we play the the Trafico uh, with Chicharito, Bella, and also also me. You know? Of course, they got two on one now. <laughs> yes, two it's on Jonah one. and Chicharito against and Bella. Yeah. <laughs> Any trash talk for that one? Will you guys be going back and forth? How have you experienced that rivalry? I think it's one of the best games of the league uh, for all the players to play this kind of games. Is very excited. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, the games, the last, the last two years that we play against them, and, and hopefully the the rivalry uh, is still like uh, I don't know, say going or I don't know, but just because Latan's gone doesn't mean it changes. <laughs> it's still there. The fan <laughs> base is having. There. It's You're feeling there. it. You will, you will see the next season that the the rivalry will be the the same or or more. Chicharito, the player. We all know Zlatan, he's a freak of nature, he's an alien, man. What he does, nobody else can do. And my perspective is we should not compare Chicharito to Zlatan. We should not compare not. anyone to Zlatan. Zlatan is, is good, as uh, he, he say, no? Yeah. So <laughs> who good. will Chicharito be in the galaxy in your mind? Oh, he will be, he will be perfect for us because we need this kind of player. I tell you, we need this kind of player that work, he score goals, he do... A very good movements. Uh, he play al always uh, in the area, and he's a killer. No, he's a killer. So uh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy uh, to have the, uh, to get him uh, to the team, and and also he's, he's a really good person. So so yes, we will enjoy Chicharito in the league. Share some of that personality with me, because we always hear that Chicharito. The player, but also the person. Yeah, What's the he person. like? He's very happy. He's happy. He's always uh, joking. Uh, I think he's he's a really he's, he will be really good for 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 the team. And and yes, I told you he's he's perfect for us right now. What's the team need to take that step forward from last year? In other words, how do you allow fewer goals? Because goals didn't seem to be the problem. It was allowing yes, fewer goals. All, always our problem was the the defense. No, always. Uh, we scored maybe five goals and they scored to us six goals. So yeah, I think it will be the, uh, uh, how to say, I don't know how to say, like at the, mm. I don't know how to say, but yes, we have to, we have to figure it out because I think it will be 
uh, for us the 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 goal to 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 get our OJT, no? Before we let you go, Mexicans, Liga MX stars in Major League Soccer, it seems like there has been a an increasing sort of conveyor belt between yourself and your brother and Chicharito and Carlos yeah. Vela, Alan Pulido, so many more this off season. What is it about MLS that's so attractive? I think it will be, it will be a big game uh, with the very good players, talent players, younger players, and I think for for the league MX and our league, uh, it's a good thing that they are like uh, we will be like play each other. So yes, I'm happy like like they are doing these kind of things uh, for 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 the league and and for the players also on, and for the plans because I think for the fans will be like like very 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 good, no. All-Star Game is going to be awesome right here in Bank of California Stadium, of yes. course. Yes, I heard sure. a quote from you that was uh, that you'd like to finish your career in L.A. Yes, I would love it. I would love it. I'm very happy here. Uh, I will say that the fans are good. The, the, the team is perfect for me. Uh, the city, uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of Mexican. I feel like at home. So, yes, hopefully, hopefully I can stay here for the rest of, of my life. I... Uh wonder what your life is like here and why it is that way for you. You feel comfortable. What is it? What do you do on a daily basis? Other than I see you picking up the, the, the hats, the, hats, the no, hat no. game is pretty I, I, You I got like, the style. Yes, you got I, the I like the fashion. I like the fashion. It's one of the things that, that I, when I finish my career, I will, I, 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 um, I will do. So but my daily is like first go to train, then maybe go to my friend. I have a really good, uh, good really good friends here. In LA, so in my family also comes very often to to visit me. So I'm I'm happy to 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 be here in this big city, uh, and, and yes, I will I want to stay here. Chicharito, Jonah, Carlos Vela, El Tráfico, Galaxy, LAFC. It's going to be a joy to watch this year. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Thank man. you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Whoa, huge props to Jonah for doing that with us in English. He's like, ah, not good enough. I'm not good enough. And I talked him into it, and then he was beyond good enough. He says that Chicharito is a killer. Had the Galaxy not gotten Chicharito, Grant Wall of Sports Illustrated reports that Rogelio Funes Mori would have been the guy. He was coming, the second option. Can we call it coming back to MLS? Uh, I think we can call it that in okay. a loose sense. But Inter Miami, where you at? Come on, Diego Alonso, you know this man so well. You have two open DP slots. Bring him to Miami and do it right now. TBD, we shall see. Let's go through some other news. And the news that has David Goss the most, quote-unquote, jacked is... Frank O'Hara. Frank O'Hara. He of the whiteboard behind Lucha yeah. Gonzalez's shoulder. The content breaking news. We found out. It was like in parentheses behind Cobra. And then Dallas was like, well, guess we should just put this out. They got him on that pre-deal from Pachuca. If you don't know who this is, he is a 31-year-old Argentine striker that has scored a ton of goals for mm -hmm. Pachuca. Super consistent. More of a channel runner. More of like a combination player than his Cobra. He's coming in the summer. So we'll have another tournament with Pachuca, and then he'll be here. This is a team that when you look at that depth chart, Boom. you start to get real excited. I am extremely excited. I think for people who don't know Hara, very simple, basic thing, he's like Chicharito. He's a fox-in-the-box guy. He can finish quickly with both feet. As you said, he runs those channels, and he is what FC Dallas didn't have. He's a pure goal scorer who can cover enough ground to also be in what – Luchi Gonzalez ideally would like, which is a pressing system. Last year, his problem was Cobra could play in home games when they dominated possession and they were on the front foot. But in a lot of situations, Cobra didn't do what he needed him to do off the ball to make it worthwhile. Which to is keep probably him on why the it field. took so long for Cobra to get on the field. Yeah, you would think. And then you have Pepe behind now, learning from Boom, the kid. Cobra, and but maybe more importantly, yeah, from Hara. But we have to say, just plainly, the fact that FC Dallas with the spending bracket that they've put themselves in in Major League Soccer, is capable of bringing in a player like Frank O'Hara. This isn't a guy who's on his last legs that Pachuca is just looking to get a payday off of. This is a guy Pachuca desperately wanted to keep. He was their leading scorer and full-time starter in the last tournament. He's and got FC 60 Dallas, goals in 131 yeah, games. Nine goals last tournament. FC yeah. Dallas is able to bring him in to upgrade that roster. That is impressive. And I look at their team and think, 
The full back five is returning. You've brought a veteran presence in Santos into your central midfield. You'd expect between Cervano and Surio and Pomacal and Ferreira a step up from these young guys as they get comfortable. He's still pretty young. Now you have a Costa coming back, probably in a more comfortable position. Now you've legitimately added to center forward. We've already mentioned not to go too deep, but Fafa Pico, I think, fits better into this team. This is an FC Dallas team that if someone going into the season says they're a contender for MLS Cup, you can't scoff at it. Like they are, they 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 had an opportunity to beat Seattle on the road in the playoffs last year. They've only gotten older. They've only gotten better. They've added the pieces exactly where they need them. I love Lucha's and I'm, side. I'm really not as concerned as many people were about Paxton Pomichol when he pulled out of U.S. camp. He had surgery. He told us, I believe on this show, that he had the surgery. You can't expect the dude to be back at 100 just going at it on the national team immediately. It is better for him to ease back in. I think that'll happen. Seattle Sounders, as we run through some news very quickly before we get out of here, Yaimar Pastor Gomez Andrade. Yeah. Tam center back, Colombian, 27 years old. Got him out of uh, Argentina. Xavier Ariaga will be his partner, you would think. This is the replacement for Kim Kihi, which it looks like he is not coming back. That is a huge signing for Seattle. Garth Lagerway has been, I don't know how he's been this offseason. <laughs> he's been a little bit uh, doubtful as to, or at least, uh, what's the right word? He's been careful. Yes, he's been a little cagey about which, what he says and who he signs. Which long-term makes sense. Short-term, I want a team in MLS to win CCL. And a few things that have happened this offseason, the way Atlanta's, gone to work and the way Seattle's gone to work as a neutral fan who wants an MLS team to win CCL it has gone in the wrong direction and I, I'll remind you I thought Kim Kihi was one of the best center backs in the league last year that it was a huge part of why they won MLS Cup you remember the look on his face at Chivas when he made his debut when he got signed late in the C, uh, uh, off season, and Seattle didn't have their pieces put together and you go on the road to a Liga MX team and it is a whole new experience I'm not saying that's going to happen here because I think they have an easier run up They'd potentially play Montreal in the next round before they'd face a Tigress in the semifinals. But it's frustrating to see what felt like a team that was fully established coming out of a most cup lose players at the their two starters at the most important position, arguably yep. for a CCL run. Now you're kind of playing from behind with Gomez. Probably he'll peak and be good in the playoffs and they'll win MLS Cup. And then they'll run this clip, and I'll look like an idiot. Yeah. But right now, I want someone Swedish to Swedish producer Anders just made a note here on the minute mark. and he's He called me a Quisling. Yeah. yeah, probably. Uh, Robert Barrick, we mentioned him with the Chicago Fire, or I should say Taylor Twelman did. And then there's rumors about Gaston Jimenez, which is a DP out of, I think he's at Velez right yeah, now. Yeah, Velez Sarsfield, 28-year-old. Yeah. He was a 10, and now he's moved deeper under Gabriel Heinze, who's the coach there, who there was rumors he'd come to MLS. Um, so he would be that... He would play, be the Dax McCarty replacement. Right. And Barrett is, seems like, I mean, the, the intro video was cool. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of City Specials. So Do you the drink Chicago hit. I mean, I would. I don't necessarily choose to. Have you? I, I have. It wasn't my best experience. Yeah. I was also in a, let's just say I was in a place where I couldn't fully appreciate the taste of. I don't think there's such thing as appreciating the taste. I know. That. That's what the benefit okay. of that. That was. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, this guy has – Robert Barrett has a good resume. He has a resume that if it was not in the midst of this Chicharito, why didn't they sign yeah. him sort of storyline, might be like, a, hey, that's a really good signing. And at this point, Chicago need more players. They need game changers. They need goal scorers. They need a lot of things. They need Rafa Wiki to get things rolling. Maybe this will be it. But right now – It's hard to say because you have players in this league who are larger than life or can carry a club. And it doesn't feel like any of these signings are that player. Yeah, which Alvaro is, Medron is kind of the same. We, yeah. we had somebody hit me up on Instagram with the scouting report that yeah. says he just hasn't ever got a, a, a run. He has it in him. He which is shown okay. It consistently, for sure. Which is okay when you talk about, right, we talk about Philly and what the Red Bulls have done. Yeah. The problem is moving into Soldier Field year one with a new coach and 12 new pieces, you're not going to be on that right level where it's, well, we're larger than the sum of our parts because we're cohesive and everyone fits our game plan and everyone fits in. The so coach the, has spent two years establishing this. Right. Yeah. So the flip side was, well, they'll sign a Chicharito, they'll sign a Podolsky, they'll sign a whatever who will be larger than life, who will carry the team a little, who people will come see. That doesn't seem to be happening. I think Pizarro has the potential to be that if that's the last piece to this whole signing. Um, oh, let's hope, man. Yeah, but it. it so, so I think I think you have to look at it in two hands. There's probably a good chance Chicago's going to be a good team for the next four or five years because of these signings, but there's it's understandable that their fan base and maybe other fan bases are a little frustrated that this is what's gone on in this window. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Minnesota United, of course, had a fairytale year last year, and now 
They're Ooh. swinging for the fences. Boom. No more of this, like, hey, we'll take Darwin Quintero on 200K. And, yeah, he was a baller, no doubt about that. Now we're talking about Reynoso, Bebe Reynoso from Boca. We're talking. He's like a, probably like an $8 million player, probably. Yeah. He's 24. And Adrian Heath said the first day of training, we're going to sign a DP attacking mid. We probably have a center back coming in as well. Do you want to fill in for uh, me? Yeah, and for, in French like- League too. And then it's the Paraguayan striker we've heard over and over and over who led the Ecuadorian league in yeah. scoring, Luis Amaria. And I, I look at this roster for Minnesota, and it's a little thin up front. You add those pieces, and you are set. If you add a legit number 10 DP alone, I think you're where you need to be. Their back line's obviously set still. They need... You know, backup at fullback, whatever. They got my guy, Ja'Cory Hayes, so they're fine. Yeah, the midfield looks, and, yeah, midfield. The, yeah, and then you have Gasper and you have Hassani Dotson yep. who fill in as well. So it, it, if they make this move, one, it's a continuation of MLS is legit right now. Yeah. And two, I think it puts Minnesota in a place to not take a step back from last year, but also – you know, Ike was a great signing. Darwin was a great signing, but those were a bit short term because of their ages. Reynoso has both runway and sell on value if Chacon is legit, and it shows you more of an angle of this is the future. We will see. I asked Adrian Heath. I pressed him. I wanted to know what's this team going to look like on the field. I didn't feel like in that interview, which you listened to on the last show, that I got a clear answer there. Mm-hmm. So as preseason continues, maybe we will get one. Some quick news into the mailbag, then out of here. Eric Godoy and the Whitecaps made it permanent. They also signed Ghanaian DM Leonard Awusa out of Israel, and Inbum Wong apparently has European interest if he plays well. Maybe RB Leipzig even interested in him. So that's interesting. Kyle Beckerman, back, going nowhere. I almost said the dreads are back, but they're not, they're not back. They're gone forever. Uh, Josh Sims, back on loan with the Red Bulls. Q panic from Red Bulls fans. <laughs> uh, that signing uh, for the Rebs, the center back, Sama Kamara, his deal was canceled over visa issues. So maybe going back to the drawing board there. And I'm um, checking my watch here. Uh, Gaston Pereiro, 24 hours, they was, said. That was three weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, that was a while ago. Hours. So looking like that's probably not going to happen for FC Cincinnati. But Let's they get... did say on this show that they're going to make the signing. Yeah, there's a diff- they'll have another option. Yep. But, we, but it's who, FC... is their, who is their Funis Mori? Exactly. But FC Cincinnati fans should expect it to happen in this window, which is pretty exciting. Okay. Mailbag time. 401-2060 MLS. Extra time at MLSsoccer.com. Uh, Ed in St. Louis wants to know, does Sporting KC have a midfield? Uh, Sporting KC does have a midfield, and they may have a new midfielder in case, you know, you were in Kansas City lurking around (laughs) the stadium, Children's Mercy. Uh, Yeah, they had on their scoreboard, which may or may not have been part of a video or a test, and an announcement for Gadi Kinda, Mm -hmm. who is, would be, they would report, a DP attacking midfielder out of Israel. I'm Yisrael uh, Chai, baby. Yeah, Beitar Jerusalem, is that where yeah, we that's come right. from? But he, watched... can't, he comes from Ashdod. Yeah, he was there for a long time. Where which our I producer Galina's family lives. Based on, uh, yeah, based on Wikipedia. But yeah. I did watch a highlight video. Ooh. Ooh. He had like a Ooh. scissor Ooh. kick. Ooh. Uns, uns, he had a lot of uns. great runs into space. Seems like a guy that wants to get his head up and push. Uh, but also had a bunch of defensive highlights in there. Because, you know, you're making that highlight video for Peter Ramis. For sure. Like, you need to have a couple of <laughs> yeah. recoveries and things of that nature. So, uh, I think they have a midfield. You have you still have Roger, who had lost a step. Ilya, there are some questions yeah, on that are. one. Gutierrez, I have no questions about. Busio, I think we'll t- take a step forward. On the wings, they are super deep. Russell, Shallowy, Gerso, maybe this guy comes in. And then up top, Polito and Shelton, I think, is a pretty good one, too. And you've but, got Busio floating around. Yeah, you do. But the one spot is that number six is Ilya. Yeah. So uh, TBD on that one. Anything else? Uh, last one here from someone in Salt Lake City. Unknown, though. Is there something about goalkeepers that makes them more suited to signing young? You've got Ochoa, of course, there. Slow, slow Nina in Chicago. And now Emmings, who is the first mm. ever si- uh, homegrown signing six in Minnesota five. United history. Yeah, just 16 years old. An absolute unit. So he said, I thought goalkeepers developed, quote, unquote, later than field players. Don't they usually get playing time later on? Why is it the case that the young um, guys are When signed? you look at these homegrowns, the thing that jumps to mind for me, for one, is like let's get them in this professional environment right now and let's do so low risk because they'll just be the third goalkeeper. And ultimately in this league, you don't want to have your third and ideally your second in many ways goalkeeper be a senior roster spot. So if you sign a homegrown player who's young like this, you're back in the cut saying we got years to let this guy sort of simmer and develop, and he won't affect the way that we spend money on other players. And then you're seeing now with USL that you can send those guys out on loan and give them a ton of opportunities, and you know they'll be in training with you. They can learn from the older guys. They can get their technique down, 
which the athleticism, I don't think, for many of these signings is necessarily the issue. It's getting the technique right. So now you have a longer runway for that. And again, you just don't have to uh, you don't have to risk a salary spot. And then like maybe they're Tyler Derrick. And down the line, you get like three, four years as a starter out of them, and the investment pays off. Yeah, absolutely. How big is it, though, to have that USL team? Because you look back in the day, and it's like you sent a homegrown goalkeeper, and then, you know, I think – like Zach McMath. I think of the John you play, Right. You play yeah. one game in six years, and now it's like, oh, this guy started 20 games last and year. And if you don't but have was still yours, around. find, you know, hey, Sacramento Republic, For hey, sure. whatever, whatever, like move them down. And but now ideally you have one. MLS GMs yes. and presidents and owners who are obviously ideally, watching this show. Yeah, yeah. Ideally you have And have made it this far. Yeah. Past Shout out to the Revs. Allocated 60 minutes. We're starting one this year. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Revs 2. Philadelphia changed their name. And then Inter Miami has one coming online. Yep. Good stuff. All right, that's it for us. Big thanks to Guillermo Berchelotto and Jonathan Dos Santos for sharing some insight on Chicharito in English with us, and of course, Taylor Twelman uh, for hitting this and probably making some news. Tom Bogert, <laughs> good debut, man. Great debut. We're just easing you in. Yeah, it's preseason. Exactly. It's the Florida Cup. We just got him a couple minutes. Yeah, exactly. Now As you know we head name. into CCL action. No, he's not trialist number one anymore. Yeah. He has an actual name. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We're out of here. We will see you. What is today? Is it today's Thursday? Today's Monday. Uh, today's Thursday. Oh, my God. Today we'll is see, Thursday. We'll see you on Monday.